I don't know what it is about this time of year, but it happens to me every year. I get this wild fascination with black and white photography. So I've been shooting a lot of it myself actually. And it really got me thinking about the greats of black and white photography and what makes an image so powerful if it's void of color. Now, one of the more obvious photographers to mention here is, of course, Ansel Adams. Now, a huge part of his workflow and how he got the portfolio he did was, of course, due to his work in the darkroom. I'll be back in a minute. I want to check a print in the darkroom. He used a lot of really traditional techniques like this one here. This is called dodging and burning. I never use a timer. I count like a metronome. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And this is the key to a good black and white photograph. I think. All dodging and burning really is, is just lightening and darkening certain parts of an image. And since I unfortunately do not have a dark room one day, I am going to emulate this technique on some of my photos with the only tool that I have. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. You can see I've culled here a handful of photos. So let's start with this road shot. I'm a sucker for this kind of shot. Um, this is not the first or last time that I will shoot a road like this. <laughs> so first things first, I'm just going to do a simple crop and rotate, um, just so that it's a little more symmetrical and level. Linus from Linus and his camera, he actually posted a video about how to save your film scans if they look crappy. If you come down here to the point curve on the right, you can see that the data, which is this dark section, um, doesn't actually start where this bar starts. And so his trick was to actually drag this point to where the data starts, and that's really your starting point. So we're gonna go over here, and we are going to basically create our own brush. So as you can see here, this big circle is now my brush and you can change the size of it, super small, super big. The key here are these levels right here, flow and density. Flow and density basically are going to help your dodging and burning blend into your photograph seamlessly and naturally. So you don't want these to be too high. It's just gonna be too intense. Bringing those somewhere in the mid range, 50s and 60s, that's gonna give you a nice natural blend. So where I wanna start is with dodging, and dodging means brightening. So this brush, we're just gonna bring the exposure up a bit. Now this level can always change once you've painted. You can see the exposure here is 1.24. So I'm brightening quite a bit. I can always back that down later if I want to. But for now, I'm just doing small strokes, truly like as if this was a paintbrush, over the clouds. I really want them to pop. But I also don't want to take away those lovely shadows kind of on the undersides of the clouds. I think that makes them very dramatic. So I'm making sure that I'm, I'm keeping those shadows intact. So that's cool. That really makes those clouds pop. So here's without and there's with. Look at all that texture in the road. Look at that right lane. Here's before, after. Bonkers. I'm gonna do that same thing in this other lane. Nice, okay. So that about does it for the um, dodging. So let's move to burning, which of course is the opposite. That is darkening parts of the image. This image is already very rich in contrast, so the key here is to not overdo it. Create a new mask, brush, and then just bring down the exposure slider a tad, and now it's time to burn. That looks really good to me. 
So here's before and there's after. I mean, it's undeniable. Let's do this one because this one, just the first step blows my mind. Look at that detail come right back. So we're gonna click into our brush again and here we go. Okay, so that looks much better than the original. Here's the original. And there's after just a minute, literally, of quickly dodging and burning. This one I'm really excited for because we get to do the infamous dark sky that Ansel Adams did so well. So there's a lot of ways you could darken the sky here. We could take a dark brush and just brush over it. We could make a linear gradient truly so many ways. So I'm just gonna stick to the way that we've been using and I'm just gonna paint right over it. So there's before and there's after. Can we just like maybe do a quick grain check? Okay, that looked pretty good. I'm gonna stop talking now and I'll just, let, let's just listen to a bit song, go. 